Hey, this is my good friend Andy Kent. Hi. I'm uh, Tim Rogers, and we, what you have here is the good looking quarter Come on. and the kind of enigmatic quarter of the Rockman UMI at the, uh, here speaking with the AU Review, which I'm a big, big six foot three, 75 kilo fan of. The first time <laughs> we were billed as you and I, the first time we sported the hard ons, it was at um, Lane Cove of any band, you know, Heroes of Ours. And, and on the chalkboard we got there, it was you and I. Oh. And, and do you remember Memorial Stadium in Seattle? But when we were touring with Soundgarden, we drove the van, drove around, and it was like, you know, Soundgarden, and then you and I. Oh, really? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> We've arrived. <laughs> what was, I mean, getting to play with Soundgarden in Seattle, irrespective of, of that, that must have been pretty cool. It was the last show of the tour, and they'd been out for a couple of months, and they were just enormous. And um, it was their homecoming show, and people had made banners with lights in them and they'd carried batteries and so when you walked out there it was just like fucking massive they just loved it that, that tour was a um we played in the states a few times before but that was the first major tour we'd done it was we were really um spoiled and you know that's so straight they gave us a bus to travel in their road crew was super cool and the band were wonderful people you know still friends to this day um and then I think the day after we finished that big party in Seattle, carrying on, we were on a, in a tiny little yellow um, short bus and um, driving to shows, you know, playing two or three people in Minneapolis. Yeah, it was a, right. quite a crash to the world. Um, yeah, I think we drove for a long way the next day. You know? Yeah, yeah. But that was a hell of a tour. I remember a lot, a lot to that. Um, yeah. Yeah, to remember, remember the, the bus drivers. They were cool. Oh. There was the guy with the Hawaiian shirt who turned up and he was just sweating like a pig. Didn't talk for a couple of days. Remember him? That wasn't James Brown, was it? Do you remember James Brown? That it was this Anglo-Saxon rockabilly guy, and his name was James Brown. He was our second driver. Was he? <laughs> <laughs> and then there was Doug. Doug. Doug, who went crazy and rode his bike in the lobby. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And the country guy, he was good. Yeah. Singing songs. Yeah. Milo. Yeah. Milo. Yeah. Seattle. Sharks. Maybe he got pulled over by the cops and he pulled open this there's one drawer that was locked in the bus and he pulled it open, it was like Lionel Hutz, it was just paper in there. Yeah, yeah. And he's like he, he just talked his way out of it, he didn't actually have a license. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> My favourite she on the, those I mean it was a hell of a way to see America and I think, you know, it um uh, you know, to varying degrees, you know, I'm in love with certain aspects of American culture, and particularly American music. And um, uh, I remember waking up, cracking a beer, looking out the window and saw a, a, the sign for the Altamont Speedway, which is a very famous um, Stones gig, was held there. You know, very unfortunate um, murder. And I just thought, wow, you know, I'm from Kalgoorlie, man. And I'm driving past Altamont and I'm on tour with my, my friends and in a rock band and we're going to play in front of 20,000 bemused Americans. And that was, uh, we played in San Diego and then drove a couple of miles to see our friends from this band Red Cross, heroes of ours, play with the Stone Temple Pilots up the road. That's right. That was, qu that was quite a night. You know, we're just playing to 15,000 people in San Diego, seeing our friends playing to 40,000 <coughs> in uh, Pasadena or somewhere. Mm. Um, it was like a K-Rock thing or something, mm. wasn't it? Weenie roast or something. You haven't actually asked the question yet, have you? <laughs> 